<laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay, I'm Matthew Shribman, and I'm a scientist by training, but I've spent quite a lot of time sort of uh, larking about in the music industry. Um, but recently I decided to get in my bath and talk about cool bits of science on the internet. Um, so, for example, like uh, wasps and bees. There's more genetic difference between wasps and bees than there is between the two most different mammals in the world. Speaking of mammals, this, uh, this, this chart shows you the distribution of mammals in the world. So this central thing is your humans, and then around it are our pets and livestock, and then the green bits are the wild animals, which are absolutely tiny. What's going on here? Is it because we like to eat meat? It is, because meat's delicious. Um, so this is a cool chart that shows you, the green bars show you how much protein we get from plants, and the red bits show you how much protein we get from animals, and then the black line shows you how much protein we actually need. So the cool thing about this is that, look, like we're almost getting the protein that we need just from plants. And plants are delicious, right? And if, like, so if Americans, if they replaced all of their beef with beans, then that alone would take them fully 50% of the way to the climate 2020 target of like the Paris Agreement that they're now not really doing. Um, <laughs> even if they started now, it would still happen. Anyway, this is another cool chart that shows you the um, resource uh, requirements for different foods. So on the left you've got your green showing you the land requirement, the blue shows you the water requirement, and then the orange shows you the emissions. So fish obviously need a lot of water, fair enough mate. But then you've got your beef. Your beef, look at, look at what beef needs. It needs huge amounts of everything. And like, if, if, we just, if we just stopped eating beef, it would free up so much land. So look, by 2050, we're gonna have almost 10 billion humans around on the planet. We're gonna need to create 70% more food. And to do this, it would be so much easier if we all just stopped eating beef. This is China. <laughs> so, <laughs> the land size of China is the amount of land that you need to grow all of the food that is either wasted or lost every single year. And that's not even counting the emissions. So if you count the emissions and you turn all of that emissions into a country, then food loss and wastage is the third biggest emitter of CO2 in the world. Um, so here's the thing showing you the damage of CO2, which we all know. So obviously you've got your greenhouse gases causing your observed global warming. And actually a lot of the other human factors are trying to cool it down. But we know that greenhouse gases are the things that are causing global warming. Don't know why I put that in. You all probably agree with that anyway. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is a chart that I think is really beautiful. So this, you can see the CO2 bar on the far right. They show, and you can trace it back to see where all the CO2 is coming from. And if you look at the food, you can see that the food is producing fully 20% of the world's CO2. And we can reduce this down a huge amount by just cutting out beef. Now, this is a um, site that unfortunately is going to become increasingly familiar. So as the food industry impacts climate change, climate change also impacts the food industry. And there are going to be lots of regions of the world that are going to become a lot less fertile. Sorry, this is getting a bit depressing, but uh, there'll they'll be enough at the end. Um, <laughs> so this chart shows you in red all the regions of the world that are going to become a lot less fertile. So you've got some key areas like India and China and America that are going to be able to produce a lot less food going on towards 2050, which is going to cause a lot of strain on the world and cause increasing problems. Um, and it's a bit sad that like places like India are going to have such a reduction in their food production potential because, you know, they're not big um, meat eaters. Um, and the USA, ironically, they're going to take a big hit, especially with their wheat. And obviously America eat huge amounts of beef and they have huge amounts of emissions as well. So we need to try and encourage all our American friends and the government to stop eating beef. Uh, anyway, uh, here's some cool things that are coming online. So uh, this is called the Impossible Burger. Uh, which is made entirely from vegetables, and it tastes like beef. It's got the texture of beef. It even bleeds a little bit like beef. I don't know why that's necessary. But <laughs> anyway, it's, it's delicious, and it's, it's one of these new innovations that is starting to come online. We've got similar things like egg-free mayonnaise. I don't know how they do that. But anyway, the, the thing is, we live in a market society, right? So when we become the change we want to see in the world, it actually happens. Like, think about all the vegetarian aisles that you see now in supermarkets. Like it's so much easier to get vegetarian and even vegan food now because people are making these choices. Um, this is a cool company called EntoCycle that are just starting up. And what they do is they're taking like food waste from the supermarkets um, such that you know, Tesco and Sainsbury's will be able to dump all their food at the end of the day in these factories where insects will eat it all up. 
and then they'll process it into lipids and proteins that you can feed back into the food system. Um, and ultimately this will be fed to animals first, but it's going to get increasingly delicious as we develop recipes until you've got your, your cricket pasta on the table as your daily meal, um, which I think is a pretty cool direction that we're heading in. Anyway, the last thing I want to talk about is this cool thing called the Methuselah Mouse Prize. So there's this prize for keeping a mouse alive for as long as you can, and mice usually live like two or three years, but you can keep them alive for like over 10 years by just not feeding them very much. And we can learn a lot about this for humans as well. Like, if you as a human eat a lot less than you think you need, you will age slower and live a lot longer. And the reason for this is that when you eat a large amount of food, you act a bit like a oil rig, like burning off a gas flare. You're just burning off that excess food and you're creating loads and loads of free radicals. And these are like really, really reactive chemicals that zip around your body and they destroy loads of bits of your body so that you start to age. And it's a bit like a brick wall. They destroy like the baseline of the brick wall. So the new cells building on top don't really know where to go. And they sort of scatter all over the place. And this is how the aging process works. And the best way to avoid free radicals is just to eat a lot less, especially beef. And also to fast regularly because that trains your body to not release the free radicals when you then eat a large amount. Uh, anyway, I've been Matthew Shribman. Uh, I want to thank Sarah Bridal, who is with the STFC Food Network. Um, she helped me set this up, and she's continuing all the research with this as well. Thanks for watching. Whew.